travel agency company in Grenada, serving our clients and businesses for over 40 years. IATA accredited, we issue tickets on 280 airlines, representatives for Condor, the German Airlines, and main agents for Virgin, KLM and Air France, who are specialists to the Middle East. Walk in to our ticket office at Morris Bishop Highway, call 439-4444, WhatsApp 534-7755, or visit caribjet.com. For your every need, Courts have you covered, best believe. Courts ready cash is for everyone. Not to worry, fast approval. Hurry up and come, come, come. We got it all, oh. we on the go. Courts ready cash, you already know. Yeah, you know we it. got it all, oh. we on the go, go, go. Courts ready cash, always ready when you're ready. Let's go. Courts ready cash, ready when you are. Experienced drivers, you've ruled the road. Now you can enjoy the rewards with Beacon's 50 plus car insurance plan. Get hassle free sign up, affordable payment options, and a free windscreen cover. Call us at 440 4447 or log on to beacon.co.tt and get driving with Beacon today. And welcome to the MTV Evening News for Monday the 16th of January. And coming up, doctor accused of abusing patients and staff at the Monkey Hospital removed from that institution. Citizens concerned about the future of the MNIB after consultations. Remembering the Kotomele tragedy 32 years ago. And in sport, over 60 youngsters participate in St. Mark Cricket Programme. We'll have details to those and other stories coming up for you right after the break and right along with the public forecast information. Stay with us. New me in 2023. Come into Courts Optical today and enjoy up to 35% off your frames and lenses with flexible painting plans available from 3 to 24 months. Schedule your appointment online today on www.courtsoptical.com. At Courts Optical, our comprehensive eye exam is always free. free. All major insurance providers are accepted. See in store for details. New me 2023 with glasses from Courts Optical. Value you can see. The first segment of MTV News is brought to you in association with GUT Cooperative Credit Union. It's where you belong. All concerned are hereby advised that the main branch of the GUT Cooperative Credit Union Limited, located on the corner of Grenville and St. John Street, St. George's, will be closed on Thursday 19th and Friday 20th January 2023. This closure has become necessary to facilitate the relocation of the branch to our new office on the corner of Halifax and Cross Streets, which will be operational from January 23rd, 2023. Management apologizes for any inconvenience caused and reminds all members that our branches at Victoria, Grenville, Grand Dance and Kariku are available to serve you. GUT Credit Union, it's where you belong. Good evening, I'm Tony Julian with the details. First up this evening, union leader confirms that a male African doctor who was accused of verbally and physically abusing patients and staff at the Monkey Hospital is no longer attached to the institution following protest action last December. We have more from Troy Gill. President of the Public Workers Union, Brian Grimes, provided an update on the situation at the Mount Gay Hospital, where it is alleged that a male doctor of African descent was verbally and physically abusing patients and staff, which resulted in protest action by the workers and their union in December last year. The Grenada Public Workers Union, uh, we are 
pleased um, to provide an update on the situation at Mongi um, Psychiatric Hospital. Um, as the nation is aware, uh, the workers protested on the 19th of December 2022 um, based on a very serious situation um, where workers felt they were being verbally abused um, by a practicing doctor and in some cases there were there were situations where uh, it ended up in borderline physical um, interactions and altercations um, so this was stated and the workers um, stood resolute and protested about it um, this was something unprecedented because you don't normally see health sector workers um, protesting against um, superiors such as doctors and things um, in, in, in that particular system. So it was very unprecedented. It took a lot um, for the union and the workers to reach that point. According to Grimes, following a letter which was sent to the Ministry of Health and the Public Service Commission, they were informed that the individual is no longer attached to the institution. On the 12th of January, um, my office was informed by senior officials from the Ministry of Health, um, the permanent secretary to be specific, that uh, the doctor um, will no longer be operating at the Mongi Psychiatric Hospital. And that is a good thing. Um, the situation was potentially explosive, could have ended up in something um, very unfortunate, potentially tragic. And the Grenada Public Workers Union wants to commend the Ministry of Health in particular. Also, um, we would like to commend the Public Service Commission in acting speedily on this matter. In an earlier report, Grimes said workers claimed that the male doctor also made derogatory comments regarding women, referring to them as dogs. For MTV News, Troy Gill. Following an incident at the J.W. Fletcher Catholic School involving an altercation between a student, family member, and teacher, May police have confirmed that three individuals, namely Sheldon Clark, Jamel Clark, and Joshua Clark of Jean Anglais St. George, were each charged with the offenses of disorderly behavior and trespassing. Sheldon and Jamel were also charged with being in possession of offensive weapons. The men were each granted bail in the sum of $4,000 with one surety and are scheduled to appear at St. George's Magistrates Court on the 9th of March this year. In another incident, Acacia Roberts of Mongay St. George, who was arrested and charged with the offense of causing harm following a recent incident on a school compound involving a student, will appear at the St. George's Magistrates Court on Friday the 24th of February. The police reminded the public that entering school compounds for the purpose of confronting another person can amount to criminal offenses, and such behavior will be treated with the utmost seriousness. As a direct response to this troubling occurrence, Catholic Bishop Clyde Harvey also issued a statement regarding violence in schools by adults. The bishop said all citizens must be concerned about the upsurge of violence in schools, especially when that violence involves children, and reminded the public that everyone has a responsibility to seek to correct it in any way that they can, whether with their own children or the children of others. The bishop further noted that such behavior should not be tolerated in any school. Prime Minister Deacon Mitchell and a team of government ministers took the conversation about the Marketing and National Importing Board, MNIB, to the Sister Isles of Cariacou and Petit Martinique over the weekend. There, many questions and concerns arose about what follows the consultations, as in the past, when it was believed that the public's opinion on situations like these were not counted. However, Prime Minister Mitchell noted that in this situation, the people can be assured that their suggestions will be considered. We have more in a report from Donella Holston. Farmers, agro-processors and other stakeholders on the sister isles of Cariacou and Petit Martinique were included in the conversation about the current affairs and future of the Marketing and National Importing Board, MNIB. 
And although the consultation sessions have been welcomed by farmers and other stakeholders, according to one concerned individual, the question of what comes next still stands. I want to believe that there are other state agencies and also statutory bodies that are in similar predicament and um, in near future hope that something could be done. It's good that we have in the consultations um, putting out the information out there that the public could know exactly what is happening with the marketing board. Um, but at the end of it all, my concern is um, to what end? What is plan B? Are we going to put a technical team in place to look at the outcome of the consultations? He also reminded the head table that farmers are in need of answers now, as farming is a continuous process and farmers need to have a market for their produce. I can tell you, farming is a thing and farmers cannot wait. We are in the dry season. Fortunately, we're still having some rains and some farmers are still harvesting crop. But we are entering the dry season and within three to four months time, the rains are going to fall again. And farmers have already started plan planning for next uh, this year rainy season. So you see something that we cannot wait. I they believe farmers and other stakeholders that do business with the marketing board, they are waiting and want answers as of yesterday. Prime Minister Honorable Dickon Mitchell addressed these concerns. Yes, the, the injunction will never be to simply shut shut down um, and take a whole long period before we, we restart. In fact. We do recognize that we will need a technical working group. I mean, part of that is part of what we've been discussing. And I'm saying, to some extent, uh, MNIB has depots and it has uh, packaging houses. And that aspect of MNIB is the core of MNIB. And so even if we are doing a restructuring, it is likely that those things will remain open to service farmers, to service the public. Uh, we just have to make sure that we do it in a manner that's efficient, in a manner that's clear, so that the farmers, the public understands what is happening and that the people will be put in the interim to manage that process, have the competence to do so, uh, so that we, as we begin the process of uh, revamping MNIB, it, it will be successful. So we, we appreciate um, that that technical working group has to happen. Reporting for MTV News, I am Donella Hostan. The people of Carriacou are calling on Minister for Mobilization, Implementation and Transformation Andy Williams and his team to provide some assistance to clean up Paradise Beach, the island's number one beach. This, according to one of the residents, there should be a part of the cleanup and transformation drive that the Ministry of Mobilization, Implementation and Transformation has implemented starting on the mainland of Grenada. We have details in this report. Paradise Beach in Hillsborough on the sister isle of Kariaku is dubbed as one of the most prestigious beaches on the small island. However, according to some concerned citizens, there is a need for a cleanup drive on this beach as there are hazards in the area. Speaking more about this was Anne Gay. Paradise Beach, I live on, I walk on Paradise Beach. And Paradise Beach is, they say, the second best in the Caribbean. Every day I go there, and lots of people pick up sea moss on the beach. And I don't know what field it fall under, if it's agriculture or whatever, fisheries or whatever. But people is, they, nest, they have their beds and they, they bang bus, and people just pick up sea moss, and everybody enjoy it. But there is a lot of hazard on Paradise Beach and um, if it's the best beach in the Caribbean why so bad? Gay said it would be good if the people of Kariaku could take a page from what is being done on mainland Grenada. Addressing this and affirming that some actions have already begun to ensure that Paradise Beach is maintained properly was Honorable Tevin Andrew, Minister for Kariaku and Petit Martinique Affairs. Um, the, the, we will be putting in some work to ensure that it, it remains that, you know, it remains prestigious and, of course, the best in the world. So there's a, there's a lot of work that will be put in. So we understand the challenges that we, we now face, but rest assured that the ministry is aware and work has already started. 
Thank you. Minister for Mobilization, Implementation and Transformation, Honorable Andy Williams, also shared a similar sentiments, noting the importance of having people within the community work together. You know, what we are trying to do is to try to build back the community spirit, where a community can look at their environment and take the initiative to see how they can clean it. Right? I mean, it's a shame sometimes for you to walk through your, your community. And, you know, you see bottles on the ground, you see it, you know, or, or, um, untidy, and think that I'm not going to do every, well, anything, I, I am going to wait on government. Right? So, what should be done is that we should have pride in our community. Reporting for MTV News, I am Donella Hosten. The Grenada Planned Parenthood Association, along with the Ministry of Health and other stakeholders, continue to roll out free health clinics in various parts of the country as part of Cervical Cancer Awareness Month. Their last stop was at the Victoria Medical Center in Victoria, St. Mark, on Saturday. And our news team spoke with nurse and midwife Linthia Buckmeyer, attached to the GPPA, who provided an update on the day's proceedings and the importance of women coming forward to get tested and screened. So far, it's been pretty okay. Persons are coming out. They're sipping in little by little. Um, and again, we'd like to um, reiterate the importance of getting tested. And we're still in the month of um, cervical cancer. So we're encouraging the ladies to come out to get their um, pap smears done. As we know, the pap smear is the early, for early detection. So if anything, you know, were to be there, you come, you get your pap smears, we pick it up early, you get your treatment while it's early. Um, the prognosis and the end results would be better because then you get your treatment early. Um, we're doing other STIs and everything. And um They'll be visiting Kariakou in the coming weeks and they're encouraging individuals there to take advantage of the opportunity, especially prior to the approaching carnival season. We know we are approaching the carnival season just now. Um, Kariakou Carnival is around the corner. So, um, we know persons will be moving from Grenada here and going up to Karakou. So it's important, you know, to come to get tested, to know your status, you know, to ensure that everything is okay. So we're encouraging persons to come out, get tested. Um, we're not only here in Victoria, we'll be in other areas as well. And we'll also be in Karakou um, the week before Carnival. So we're encouraging the kayaks to come out and to get tested before, you know, you go and you enjoy yourselves fully. That's the first segment of news here for Monday on MTV. We'll be back with you after the break. The first segment of MTV News was brought to you in association with the GUT Cooperative Credit Union. It's where you belong. All concerned are hereby advised that the main branch of the GUT Cooperative Credit Union Limited, located on the corner of Grenville and St. John Street, St. George's, will be closed on Thursday 19th and Friday 20th January 2023. This closure has become necessary to facilitate the relocation of the branch to our new office on the corner of Halifax and Cross Streets, which will be operational from January 23rd, 2023. Management apologizes for any inconvenience caused and reminds all members that our branches at Victoria, Grenville, Grand Dance and Kariku are available to serve you. GUT Credit Union, it's where you belong. Do your dreams seem far, far away from coming true? The National Lotteries Authority's Lotto Jackpot is $262,000. Fulfilling your plans can be just one ticket away. So, play today. Lotto, play and win a lot of money. Weather Guard Crew. For every project, there's only one crew. What does it take to be an amazing woman? Lots of me time. Amazing women are classy, 
fancy and a little sassy. It's the drink for me. Cheers. Sometimes you've got to show them who's boss. Alpha male? Nah, alpha females are more amazing. Cheers to secure in the bag. We make time for ourselves, for work, friends, and we certainly make time for passion. We're simply amazing. Amazing cream liqueur for the amazing woman in you. When a loved one passes on, we all need the comfort, support, and guidance of a trusted friend. You can rely on LaCroix Brothers Funeral Home. We provide a personalized professional service that exceeds all expectations. Our dedicated staff responds to your every need with the greatest detail, ensuring affordability with a variety of options. Our upgraded state-of-the-art facilities, spacious air-conditioned chapel with live internet streaming, a modern, environmentally safe crematorium, the only of its kind on island, private viewing spaces, large on-site repair center, a modern transportation fleet. Join our burial society today and make personalized arrangements for that final moment. As you prepare to enter your loved one into eternal rest, visit or call LaCroix Brothers Funeral Home and select a package that brings added comfort to the entire family. LaCroix Brothers Funeral Home and Burial Society, continuing a tradition of excellence. The second segment of MTV News is brought to you in association with the Communal Cooperative Credit Union Limited. To grow with us, save with us. your gifts of love for chair 2.0 it is the season for holly jolly days at the communal it's all about sharing the warmth of this season with those you love getting on this special loan taking advantage of great interest rates with no principal payments until january 2023 share the gift of love the offer ends january 31st 2023 lending terms and conditions apply gifts of love with Welcome back. Today, Monday, the 16th of January, marks 32 years since the Kodomele tragedy, which took the lives of many Grenadians who were journeying from St. John and St. Mark to St. George's on the passenger bus Greenleaf. To date, this accident is recorded as the worst ever to have occurred in the country. MTV News spoke with Mona Julian, who was at the time the news editor at Radio Grenada on that day. Mona Julian recalls the incident in Concord in 1991 when the large boulder fell on the minibus. And he told me that someone called to say that um, there was an accident in that area um, with a stone and he was very um, reluctant to really take it serious, you know, because um, being the radio station, we were accustomed to getting prank calls. Julian says what started as a normal working day in the country ended in one of the nation's saddest days. We realized the seriousness of, of the, um, the incident. Um, there was quite a lot of people on the scene at the time, but they gave us the opportunity to go close to the um, where the stone had fallen on the bus. Um, so we were able to witness um, some persons who were crushed at the back and then the, the two front end loaders arrived. Then we realized that they were, actually, they were actually coming to the scene of the accident. Julian recalled seeing the ambulance on site making trips to and from the hospital. Julian says the magnitude of the situation was unbelievable and she still grieves with the families of lost loved ones. It's one of two very horrific experiences I've had as when I served in, in, in media. And um, yeah, I still remember it, you know, um, especially when um, the, the, the crowd move, moved aside for us to see for ourselves what was happening. I can still, there was a lot of screaming and so on in the background. And I know that, you know, people were really traumatized at, at what happened because when I first um, heard the, about the incident, I simply, you know, said, you know, 
you know, a stone fall on the bus and the bus, you know, is on fire. You know, I couldn't imagine the magnitude of the situation. And then getting there and seeing it for myself, I was able to understand the extent to which those who were calling and, and screaming and so on. Students of the Grenada Boys Secondary School, GBSS, the Presentation Brothers College, BBC, and the St. Joseph's Convent in Grenville were privy to see a film that was featured at the Grenada Pavilion at the Venice Biennale last year. The MTV News team caught up with the team, which included the film director, actor, and director of the Grenada National Museum, who were more than happy to expose these students at the PBC to the content of the film. Details in this report from Donella Holston. It was quite an experience for the students of the Grenada Boys Secondary School, the Presentations Brothers College, and the St. Joseph's Convent, Grenville, as they witnessed the screening of a film directed by P.T. Martinique born Billy Gerard Frank. Prior to the screening at the Presentation Brothers College on Monday, Frank explained the storyline of the film. We here to screen a film called Palimpsest, Tell Spawn from Sea and Memory. It's based on the life of Kuguano, who was a major abolitionist in England in the 18th century. Uh, he was kidnapped in Ghana, which was then the Gold Coast, brought to Grenada as a slave, then brought to uh, England as a servant. We'll tell you more about that later. So the film actually played in the Venice Biennale in uh, 2022. And I was one of the artists that was part of a collective representing Grenada in the Biennale. The Venice Biennale is one of the oldest art um, exhibitions in the world. And every country selects one or two artists or more artists to represent the National Pavilion. And it's usually up for like seven months. He stated that this was the second time one of his films entirely shot in Grenada was featured at the Biennale. It was noted by historian John Angus Martin that the language used in the film was that of the 18th century English. He also encouraged the students to pay close attention to the film. Martin also encouraged the students to take the opportunities they have now to build on their skills and talents. Don't be afraid to look stupid. Um, do stupid things because that's where stuff come out. I never thought I would be a writer. I kept journals for about 10 years. I try reading them now and they're horrible. <laughs> but it's what got me writing every day, you know? And that is why, that is how taking your thoughts from your head and putting it on paper, it's really important. Most people could come up, they think they've been thinking of something for a long time. When they start writing, they come up with two sentences, most people. The idea of being, the ability to take some ideas from your head and put it on paper, it's not the easiest thing as we think. You guys know when you have done it to write a paper, how difficult that stuff is. But if you keep doing it over and over and just letting anything come out, don't even worry about what the punctuation and things like that. You know, worry less about that. It's just about getting ideas out. Reporting for MTV News, I am Donella Hostel. As part of his 30-year anniversary, a local club of St. Andrew will host a series of events and activities, including an award ceremony aimed at recognizing individuals and organizations who contributed to the development of the big parish. Troy Gill has more. The Leo Club of St. Andrew is celebrating its 30-year anniversary this year under the theme, Fueled by Our Past, We Forge Ahead, Making a Difference. According to President of the Club, Shaquille Isaac, speaking to MTV News on Monday, this is a significant milestone for the organization. The Leo Club is actually the younger of the organization and it's part of the Lions Club International. Now, the Lions Club International has been in existence for over 100 years. So for us to be celebrating 30 years out of that 100 year within the LCI organization, it is a tremendous milestone. Um, in particular for St. Andrews as well, 
because we have just the Lions Club of St. Andrew, which celebrated 51 years last year, and now we're celebrating our 30th anniversary. So we see that over the period of the Lions Club, it's been more than half of its time that we have the Leo Club starting, and we are very proud and we're very happy that we have been able to remain in existence and to grow from strength to strength as the years progress. He also highlighted some of the activities that the club engages in on a yearly basis. So we are engaged in a lot of community service activities such as beach cleanups, we have different um, engagements with the community and we sensitize them on different areas such as breast cancer awareness, diabetes, AIDS, hunger and so forth, right? We also promote development, professional development that is for our members. Marketing and Communications Chairperson Amondel Sampson highlighted some of the activities they will be hosting as part of the celebrations. So on Wednesday we're going to be having a school feeding program and that's going to be done at four schools within the parish of St. Andrew. Um, hunger alleviation is an important aspect of the work that we do in the community. So to add to that, we're also going to be, going to be doing a hamper distribution at the Cadrona home in Lafayette and Andrew, because we also value the elderly people within our, within our society because they have contributed so much and we tend to forget them sometimes. On Saturday, we are going to be having our award ceremony and cocktail at PB's Enterprise on Gladstone Road in Grenville. If you don't know what PB's is, PB's is basically um, Peter Bain's Enterprise. As you know, Peter Bain is a prolific member in the society who passed on last year. And he also collaborated with the Leo Club of St. Andrew on a number of projects. So we want to honor him as well as other people within our society who have contributed and partnered with us over the years. These celebrations commenced with a church service on the weekend and a mental health forum on Monday. For MTV News, Troy Gill. That's the second segment of news, business in three and regional highlights are next. The second segment of MTV News was brought to you in association with the Communal Cooperative Credit Union Limited. To grow with us, save with us. your gifts of love for chair 2.0 tis the season for holly jolly days at the communal it's all about sharing the warmth of this season with those you love getting on this special loan taking advantage of great interest rates with no principal payments until january 2023 share the gift of love the offer ends january 31st 2023 lending terms and conditions of life I want your folks to play these three games from the NLA. Daily pick three cash flow and play with. You will be supporting sports and culture. Nation building and our future. So go out and play, folks. Make it a must. You will see what the National Lottery is doing for us. When you play pick three cash flow and play with, the NLA will support you all the way. Start on September 30th, Monday to Friday. These three games will be drawn mid-morning, 9.45 a.m., midday, 12.45 p.m., and evenings, 7.45 p.m. The National Lotteries, supporting sports, culture, and nation building. Sunday money day. New me in 2023. Coming to Courts Optical today and enjoy up to 35% off your frames and lenses with flexible painting plans available from 3 to 24 months. Schedule your appointment online today on www.courtsoptical.com. At Courts Optical, our comprehensive eye exam is always free. free. All major insurance providers are accepted. See in store for details. New me 2023 with glasses from Courts Optical. Value you can see. 
Your vehicle insurance should never break your bank. With Beacon, you can get up to 35% off your fully comprehensive car insurance and still get full protection from unexpected damages with free loss of use, windscreen cover, and special perils. When it comes to your insurance, always be sure you settle for more. Call us at 440-4447 or log on to beacon.co.tt and get a quote today. At Bailey's Funeral Home, we understand the pain and grief you experience when you suffer the loss of a loved one. For years, we have helped thousands of families get through that difficult time by providing professional funeral services to meet their unique needs. Whether your choice is cremation or burial, call us or come into our new facility on the Carnage and meet with our arrangers in a spacious and comfortable environment. Choose from a wide variety of quality coffins and caskets at prices from as low as $1,900. At Bailey's Funeral Home, we believe that no one should feel overwhelmed or anxious about funeral expenses. So when it's time to plan a funeral, join a burial society, or make pre-arrangements when service and costs matter, call Bailey's Funeral Home at 440-2558 or visit us at baileysfuneralhome.org. Bailey's Funeral Home, still providing the perfect tribute any family can afford. The third segment of MTV News is brought to you in association with Arisa Credit Union. Your financial freedom, your future. Ridgeway Residences a modern, exclusive residential community offered by Ariza. Purchase one of our completely built houses or let us build for you by simply choosing your lot, choosing your home design from our selection, and let us do the rest. Owning a home does not have to be a frustrating process. For more information, contact Arisa Credit Union on 415-0994 or send us an email on info at ridgewayresidences.gd. Ridgeway Residences, hassle-free home ownership. Welcome back. Do you have a special occasion coming up? A wedding, a birthday party? Don't know where to start? Don't know what to wear? Well, now you can relax, enjoy your moment and breathe while Breathe Events take care of everything. Breathe Events provides you with the ultimate experience from choosing the picture-perfect dress to having the perfect location and decor. And now is Donella Holston with this week's feature on MTV's Business in 3. Good evening viewers and welcome to another edition of MTV's Business in 3. I am Donella Hosten. Today we are speaking with Nikisha Boney Mitchell, owner and manager of Breathe Events. Relax in the moment. She will be speaking to us about what she does and why she does it. So what Breed Events does, as I said, um, we rent wedding dresses for persons who find it difficult to order dresses online. And you know when it comes here, the dress can't fit, they get disappointed on the last minute. So we are here to help that individual breathe while relax in their special moments. We are also here to rent bouncing castles for the children, you know, last minute things, the child wants a castle to jump in on their birthday party. We are also here to do that. And with that, now we also um, help other small entrepreneurs um, increase in their, in their revenue. Normally, I link a small business, probably a baker or someone who actually does decorations to also help them earn an income. And, and I love what I do. I love helping persons. I like making persons feel relaxed and enjoy their moment. Tell us about what's happening today. I think there's a new addition to your line of dresses. Yes. All right. So just tell us a little bit about that. 
All right, so today, January 15th, um, Breed Events is adding a new collection to their dresses. So besides the wedding dresses, we like to focus a little bit more on flying dresses. We're realizing that um, flying dress is a satin gown that shows beautiful in natural light. So it gives a wonderful photograph image and not making the individual feel and look stunning, but having them relax while they take pictures or videos with the dress. What are your costs like? The cost of the dresses is quite reasonable, I must say. Um, it ranges from, you could say, about $140, $150. So just tell the people where and how they can contact you. I know you said where you, um, in Birch Grove, St. Andrew, you're located, but just give them maybe a contact number, email address, and how they can contact you. All right then, so I can be, I'm located at Brush Grove St. Andrews on the main road, right? Um, my contact number, I could give you 419-0288. I'm located, it can be WhatsApp as well. So there you have it guys. We were speaking with Mrs. Nikisha Boni Mitchell, owner and manager of Breathe Events. Relax in the moment. For MTV's Business in 3, I am Donella Hosten. It's MTV Evening. And now for this evening's regional roundup, I'm Ocelyn Crosby. The Royal Turks and Caicos Islands Police Force is investigating the fatal stabbing of a Jamaican national early Monday morning on Grand Turk. The deceased, whose identity was not released, is a Jamaican man, 33, listed as being employed as a chef. According to a police statement, around 3.39 a.m., the Royal Turks and Caicos Islands Police Force Control Room received a report that a male had been stabbed in Palm Grove District. A team of officers from the Grand Turk Police Station responded to an address in Palm Grove where they observed a male bleeding from what appeared to be a stab wound to the chest lying on the ground unresponsive. Acting Assistant Superintendent of Police Michael Francois commenting on the murder said the identity of the victim is being withheld at this time pending the next of keen being informed. However, he extended sympathy to the family and friends of the deceased as they grieve this untimely death. I am appealing to members of the public to notify the closest police station or the contact Crime Stoppers and give any information on this murder. Your information will be treated with the strictest of confidence. And that's according to Acting Assistant Superintendent of Police, Michael Francois. Now moving to news in Antigua with the Chair of the Commonwealth Observer Group in Antigua and Barbuda. His Excellency Danny Farr has encouraged citizens of Antigua and Barbuda to vote in the country's general elections on the 18th of January 2023. The former president of the Seychelles made his remarks in a statement in the capital St. John's following the arrival of five Commonwealth observers on the 14th of January 2023. From the 17th of January, the group will be deployed across the country to observe the pre-election preparations as well as voting, counting and results processes at polling stations. An interim statement of the observations will be issued shortly after the election day. Over the next few days, observers will receive a series of briefings from political parties, civil society, women's and youth groups, and the media to gain a better understanding of the mood in the country ahead of the election. Following the election, the group will submit its recommendations in a report to the Commonwealth Secretary General, who will forward it to the government of Antigua and Barbuda, the country's electoral commission, the leadership of political parties taking part in the elections, and all Commonwealth governments. The report will be made public shortly after that. The group's eminent members include serving and former politicians, elections professionals and journalists hailing from Jamaica, Kenya, Seychelles, St. Vincent and the Grenadines and the United Kingdom. And now finally, independent candidate for St. Peter's, Asot Michael, said bomb threats were made against his home and business place on Sunday. In a statement, Michael's campaign team said they received the bomb threat around 10.30 p.m. Just as they wrapped up campaigning, Michael has reported 
the matter to the Assistant Commissioner of Police, who is in charge of the Criminal Investigation Department. Michael is, however, not confident in the police investigating the matter, since they have not addressed his previous security concerns. The commitment for a prompt investigation never materialized. This incident comes upon the recent report of drones flying over the home of the candidate less than a week ago. This occurred while close to 80 of his campaign workers were conducting campaign duties, the campaign team said. A request was made by the candidate to trace the calls made to his cell phone. The candidate even went further and reached out to Attorney General the Honorable Stedroy Benjamin, Minister Responsible for Justice and National Security. They have called on Police Commissioner Atley Rodney to provide Michael with the necessary security measures for his life, family and his many campaign workers. And that's the regional roundup this evening. I'm Arsene Crosby. This is CMTV Evening News. We'll be back with you after the break. The third segment of MTV News was brought to you in association with Arisa Credit Union. Your financial freedom, your future. Ridgeway Residences, a modern, exclusive residential community offered by Ariza. Purchase one of our completely built houses or let us build for you by simply choosing your lot, choosing your home design from our selection, and let us do the rest. Owning a home does not have to be a frustrating process. For more information, contact Arisa Credit Union on 415-0994 or send us an email on info at ridgewayresidences.gd. Ridgeway Residences, hassle-free home ownership. You're watching the MTV Evening News. Sporting highlights are next. I want your folks to play these three games from the NLA. Daily victory cash flow and play with you will be supporting sports and culture, nation building and our future. So go out and play, folks, make it a must. You will see what the national lottery is doing for us. When you play big tree cash flow and play with the NLA will support you all the way. Starting September 30th, Monday to Friday, these three games will be drawn mid-morning, 9.45 a.m., midday, 12.45 p.m., and evenings, 7.45 p.m. The National Lotteries, supporting sports, culture, and nation building. Sunday money day. What does it take to be an amazing woman? Lots of me time. Amazing women are classy, fancy, and a little sassy. It's the drink for me. Cheers! Sometimes you've got to show them who's boss. Alpha male? Nah, alpha females are more amazing. Cheers to securing the bag. We make time for ourselves, for work, friends, and we certainly make time for passion. We're simply amazing. Amazing cream liqueur for the amazing woman in you. Poly Natural Spring Water is a water for every occasion on the field of sports, at your workplace. Just open the bottle and savor the pure, refreshing taste. Poly Natural Spring Water is produced in Mama Can St. Andrews and is available in all sizes nationwide. To order, telephone 444-7654 or 533-7654. Poly Natural Spring Water, Grenada's purest bottled water. Over 60 youngsters participate in St. Mark Cricket Program. That highlight and more coming up for you in our sporting segment. The MTV Evening Sports is brought to you in association with Courts, bringing value home.
Good evening, sporting fans. Here now is Donald Holston with this evening's sporting highlights. The London-based Cheswick Cricket Club, along with the Old Boys Cricket Club and the St. Mark Cricket Council, had their official launch of the St. Mark Youth Cricket Development Program at Alston George Park, Victoria. Representative from the Cheswick Cricket Club is Gleaston Batiste. It's good to see everyone here. Here, I really hope, hope we can continue for a few years down the line. This is not just about today, but this is about the development of cricket in St. Mark's. So we hope in the, in the next few years we could get some of you guys to come to the UK to play as well. That's the plan. Representing the Grenada Cricket Association is Rondell Batiste. The participants to you, the youths, I want to encourage you as you go through this program that you display helpful attitudes towards your peers. You show that level of respect to your peers. You show that level of respect to your guardians. You show that level of respect to your coaches. And you show the willingness, the willingness to learn. And most importantly, you maintain a high level of discipline. Senior cricket coach at the Ministry of Sports is Rafael Crony. What is happening today in St. Mark's uh, must be written down in history in that it's one of the, the first parish that will start a grass, this sort of grassroots program. And I certainly want to commend the council for the move that they have taken because we do believe that if our, the game of cricket is going to move forward, we need to start from the grassroots. And I really applaud the effort by the council uh, for the move that we have made to start this, this, this program this morning. The Cheswick Cricket Club has donated a quantity of cricket gear and training equipment that would be used for the duration of the program. Among the packages are bats, helmets, gloves, both batting and wicket-keeping, scoreboards and balls. Following the opening ceremony, there was a cricket fiesta, exposing the young people to the basic rules governing the sport, in addition to rekindling that love for cricket. The Windward Islands Cricket Board had their first best versus best red ball match series that happened in Grenada at the National Stadium on January 12th to 14th. MTV Sports spoke to the head coach of the Windward's Volcanoes cricket team, Shirley Clark, and he had this to say about the three-day practice match. I think that the batsmen and boarders are having a, a good run out there in the middle, and that's very, very important in the, to the tournament. Well, for the second game coming, um, we want to see uh, batsmen getting hundreds, obviously, uh, wicket, um, and borders getting uh, among the wickets and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, we want to see people fighting uh, and working out uh, certain situations in the middle. Yeah, we just want for the guys to really go there and um, get themselves ready, mentally ready and stuff, and physically ready uh, for the start of the tournament. I think this time around, we will have a better um, selection of players. I think we have um, a good core of players to choose from, and I think the team will be solid. The three-day matches provided the best Windwards players with a valuable match practice ahead of the West Indies Regional 4-Day Championship, scheduled to begin on January 31st, 2023. The series also gives the Windwards selection panel an opportunity to assess players with a view of selecting the best Windwards team for the championship. On Saturday, the Grenada Athletic Association held the Adrian Mitchell Open at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. MTV Sports took its cameras to the stadium to bring our sports fans some of the highlights from the track and field games.
The Grenada Football Association started the Independence Cup over the weekend at different playing fields around the island. The results of day one is as follows. Willis Youths defeated Sunsetters FC and advanced. Carnage FC defeated Sab Spartans SC and advanced. FC Kamahan defeated Sunjets and advanced. SAFL won by penalties 4-3 against Honved. Shamrock won by penalties 5-4 against St. John's Sports and GBSS defaulted. So Mount Rich SC advanced automatically. The results of day two is as follows. Springs FC defeated Hampshire United and advanced. Queen's Park Rangers defeated Mount Horn and advanced. St. David's FC defeated RGPF and advanced. Paradise FCI defeated Monjalu and advanced. Hard Rock FC won by penalties 5-4 against Chantemel FC and North Stars won by penalties 5-4 against Eagle Super Strikers. And that's it for this evening's sports. I am Donella Hosten. Thank you, Donella, for the latest in sport. And we'll have the public forecast coming up for you. And then a recap of the main stories. The MTV Evening Sports was brought to you in association with Quartz, bringing value home. Good morning, evening views, and back once again with the nighttime with the forecast and meteorologist Wayne Williams. Fair conditions uh, throughout most of the uh, Eastern Caribbean today, but we did see some showers during the mid morning period, mostly here in Grenada. We are looking at a surface trough, well, weak frontal trough that has moved into the northern caribbean it's going to affect us we're going to see winds uh, getting lighter over the next couple of days starting even from tonight and there's a possibility that we could be seeing some showers developing tomorrow and into wednesday but right now it is still to the west of the island chain another area of uh, showers just to the east of the islands the slight haze continues to uh, move towards island so we're going to see some uh, slight reduction in visibility but the haze is not as significant as it was before this band of uh, cloudness and showers to the east of the islands is what could impact us over the next couple of days bringing some light showers with it we do not expect those to be very uh, well, to last very long, but still it could bring some much needed rainfall. The forecast for Monday night is for generally fair conditions, but there is the 40% chance of the other isolated shower, mostly in inland hilly areas. Uh, winds would be northeastly between 5 and 15 miles per hour, bit lighter than we were seen over the weekend. Minimum temperature 24. The moon is, uh, well, it's set this afternoon at 101 and it's going to rise in the morning at 2 minutes past 2. Scattered showers are in the forecast for Tuesday. That's after some morning sunshine. Winds are expected to be still between 10 and 20 miles per hour, moderate seas, 4 to 6 foot waves. The sunrise at 631, sunset 602. Temperature will climb. If we do see those showers, the temperature will climb. The maximum will climb to around 31 and feel like 33. Fair conditions are in Super Port of Spain with scattered showers in Bridgetown and lots of sunshine in Kingston. Sunny also in Miami, cloudy in New York. It's getting cooler again, a high of 6 and partly cloudy in London with a high of 3. Fifty percent chance of some isolated showers on Wednesday. Partly cloudy on Thursday and Friday. Still about a forty percent chance of some residual showers, mostly on Thursday. However, generally fair conditions. Uh, that's how the weekend is looking so far. We'll continue to monitor to see how that transpires. That's it for me for Monday night, folks. Have yourself a great night. Join me again on Tuesday. And now to end the news, a recap of the headlines.
Doctor accused of abusing patients and staff at the Monkey Hospital removed from that institution. Citizens concerned about the future of the Marketing and National Importing Board after consultations. We are remembering today the tragedy at Koto Mili 32 years ago. And in sport, over 60 youngsters participate in St. Mark Cricket Program. We've had details to those and other stories to look to at the public forecast information. So now, on behalf of the news and production departments, I'm Tony Julian. We all thank you for watching and wish you a good night. Imagine winning $25,000 and up to six times by scratching just one little ticket. Get your triple cash scratch tickets for a chance to live your best life. Win easy with scratch. For just $3, match any of your numbers to any of the winning numbers and win the prize shown for that number. Reveal a money back symbol and win the prize instantly. Triple cash scratch. In stores now. Must be 18 or older to play. Good evening, viewers and listeners. This is the National Lotteries Authority's Daily Pick 3 Evening Draw. It is Monday, January 16th, 2023. I'm your draw hostess, Leslie Ann Johnson. Supervising the draw is Ms. Makiba Bain, who's representing PKF Accountants and Business Advisors. To give you a quick reminder, as usual, there are four different bet types in this game from which you can choose. They're called in line, mix, pair, and backup. You place to play Daily Pick 3. Have your tickets out. Let's see if you are a lucky winner. Good luck to you. All right, so here we go. Let's play it's our first number. That number is zero, the second number. Three, final number, four. All right, so just to recap, the benefit of first number is zero, followed by three, the final is four. So congratulations, of course. If you are a lucky winner, we say congratulations as well to our 33 Daily Pick 3 winners from our midday draw. The total payout was $5,080. The Playway Draw is up next. We'll see you soon. It's the big one, Grenada. Imagine winning $25,000 and up to six times by scratching just one little ticket. Get your triple cash scratch tickets for a chance to live your best life. Win easy with scratch. For just $3, match any of your numbers to any of the winning numbers and win the prize shown for that number. Reveal a money back symbol and win the prize instantly. Triple cash scratch in stores now. Must be 18 or older to play. Cause I'm a winner From the moment that I get up I'm feeling right Hello once again, this is the National Lotteries Authority's Playway Evening Draw for today, Monday, January 16th, 2023. I'm your draw host, it's Leslie Ann Johnson. With me once again is Ms. Makiba Bain, representing PKF Accountants and Business Advisors. In this game, you can bet from $1 up to $10, or you can bet in increments on any number or dream symbol of your choice and being with a chance to win 24 times the amount you bet. So that's $24 for every $1 spent. Value your dreams and win your way with Playway. So let's see if you are a lucky winner. Good luck to you. That number is a 
34. Once again, our play win number is 3434. The dream symbol is Marco. So congratulations if you are a lucky winner. Congratulations as well to our 147 playway winners from our midday draw. The total payout was $13,824. Stay with us. The Daily Cash Flow is up next. We'll see you soon. Win more with the NLA's Daily Cash Flow. Every day with more plays and bigger prizes to be won. It's a four-digit game with all the bet types you already know and much, much more. From 0000 to 9999. Choose your four numbers and place your bet from 11 different bet types. Choose from inline, four different mixes, first three, last three, and four different backup options too. Best of all, it starts at just one dollar except for backups which starts at two dollars win as much as five thousand dollars with a one dollar inline bet and as much as six thousand two hundred dollars in a two dollar backup bet imagine fifty thousand dollars for a winning ten dollar inline bet there's definitely more to win with the daily cash for more plays bigger prizes twice per day mondays to saturdays must be 18 and over to participate NLA, making your dreams come true while supporting sports, culture, and nation building. Hello once again. This is the National Lotteries Authority's Daily Cash for Evening Draw for today, Monday, January 16th, 2023. I'm your draw hostess, Leslie Ann Johnson. Back with me once again is Ms. Makiba Bain, representing PKF Accountants and Business Advisors. This game, you can choose any number from 0 to 9 in any of the 11 bet types offered. The tickets cost as little as $1 except backup, which costs $2. More plays, bigger prizes. Let's play Daily Cash 4. Good luck to you. All right, here we go. First number for tonight. One, the second number. Two, next number. Two, and final number. Five. Okay, so just to recap, the benefit offer number is one, that's followed by two. The next number is two as well, and the final number is five. So that's one, two, two, and five. Congratulations if you are tonight's lucky winner. Congratulations as well to our 14 daily cash for winners from our midday draw. The total payout was $3,000. Stay with us. The lotto draw comes up shortly. We're playing for $262,000. We'll see you soon. Win more with the NLA's Daily Cash Fall. Every day with more plays and bigger prizes to be won. It's a four-digit game with all the bet types you already know and much, much more. From 0000 to 9999. Choose your four numbers and place your bet from 11 different bet types. Choose from inline, four different mixes, first three, last three, and four different backup options too. Best of all, it starts at just one dollar except for backups which starts at two dollars win as much as five thousand dollars with a one dollar inline bet and as much as six thousand two hundred dollars in a two dollar backup bet imagine fifty thousand dollars for a winning ten dollar inline bet there's definitely more to win with the daily cash for more plays bigger prizes twice per day mondays to saturdays must be 18 and over to participate NLA, making your dreams come true while supporting sports, culture, and nation building. Good evening, viewers and listeners. This is the National Lotteries Authority's Lotto Draw number 3459 for today, Monday, January 16th, 2023. I'm your draw hostess, Leslie Ann Johnson. Supervising the draw is Ms. Makiba Bain, who's representing PKF Accountants and Business Advisors. So we're playing for $262,000 tonight. But of course, before we select the five winning numbers, we will select your free ticket letter. Free ticket letter for tonight is C has in cash. Check to see if it matches that on your ticket. If it does, of course, you can claim your free ticket at your outlet of purchase. So we'll now select tonight's five winning numbers for $262,000. Good luck to you.
So let's just recap for your benefits, starting with the free ticket letter that is C as in cash and the five winning numbers for $262,000. 12, 1, 2, 19, 1, 9, 15, 1, 5, 25, 2, 5, 26, 2, 6. Congratulations to you, of course, if you are a lucky winner tonight. Continue supporting the National Lotteries Authority. Have a great night. For over 80 years, we have been the trusted friend you relied on for comfort, support, and guidance. At LaCroix Brothers, we continue to provide the professional quality services you need when a loved one passes on. And now, for your convenience and added financial ease, we offer specially designed funeral packages for only $6,000 VAT inclusive. Special conditions apply. As you plan ahead, we have removed all enrollment fees for our burial society. This offer ends December 31st. Enter your loved one into eternal rest. Visit Aqua Brothers Funeral Home for greater choices at the lowest possible prices. Select a package that brings added comfort to the entire family. Serving you from locations in St. George's, Grenville, and Caracou. Telephone 440-2302. Call us any time of day or visit www.lacroixbrothers.com. Lacroix Brothers Funeral Home, continuing a proud Grenadian tradition of excellence. Teresa Sita Allert, also known as Tux, of Marigot St. John, passed away on Tuesday, 13th December 2022, at the age of 81. She was the mother of Andy St. John, Reginald Ferguson, and Carlene Allert, adopted mother of Clinton Daniel, grandmother of 16, great-grandmother of 6, sister of Jean Thomas in the USA, many nieces and nephews close friends Rachel Nelson, Miss Vera, and Irene, many other relatives, friends, and neighbors of Marigot and surrounding areas. The funeral of the late Teresa Sita Allert, also known as Tux, of Marigot St. John, will take place on Tuesday, 17th January at 1 p.m. Funeral service will be held at the St. Matthew's Anglican Church, Black Bay St. John, and interment will be at the family cemetery. Funeral arrangements entrusted to Bailey's Funeral Home. Kendon Anthony Mark of Lamoud St. George, who resided in Brooklyn, New York, USA, died on Saturday, 19th November 2022 in New York at the age of 37. Left to cherish his memory are his mother Agnes Mark Springer, sisters Karina Mark, Kanisha and Camille Bartholomew, brother Sean Mark, also known as Shawi, close friend Raquel Mitchell, Aunts and uncles including Anne Mark, Rosetta and Cecilia Springer, Sandrine and Jacinta Bartholomew, Nelson and Winston Springer, Cecil Bartholomew and Cuthbert Springer, niece Navaya Bartholomew, nephew Christopher Lewis, many relatives and friends including Rosemary Springer, Paul Springer, Paula Alexander, Peter Lee Mark, Marvin, Rudel, the boys by Junior Shop Lamode, the Honorable Jonathan Lecret of Happy Hill, the Happy Hill Secondary School graduating class of 2004, and friends and neighbors of Lamoud, Bolio, Boca, Vendam, and surrounding areas. The funeral service for the late Kendon Anthony Mark of Lamoud St. George, who resided in Brooklyn, New York, USA, will take place on Tuesday, 17th January at 1 p.m. Funeral service will be held at the Ebenezer Church of God, Bolio, and entombment will be at the Beaulieu Cemetery. 
funeral arrangements entrusted to Bailey's funeral home. Sarah Sandy, also known as Dofraid and Sister Sandy, of Brooklyn Concord St. John, a well-known market vendor and farmer, passed away on Saturday, 17th December 2022, at the age of 91. She was the mother of William Sandy in Bermuda, and Francis, Hilary Marion Benjamin, Wilbur and Sandy, Yuland Olden, and Leah Pilgrim in the USA, Ivy Patrick and Lynn Gill in Trinidad, Veronica Maxwell, Stephen Ezra Sandy, also known as Debbie, David Sandy, and Lynneth Tika, also known as Sister Lynn, sister of Veronica Patrong, Bolton, and Daniel Nicholson, grandmother of 32, including Sarah Lynn, Clyde, Camilo, O'Neill, Dominic, Wendy, Sean, Reba, Kevin, Linton, Tyron, and Julia, great-grandmother of 49, including Zaniah, Caleb, Andy Jr., Nathan, and Ariel, aunt of many, including Keith, Angela, Nancy, Derek, Candace, and Elvin, sister-in-law of Doreen Lewis, Shirley, Kim, and Marva, mother-in-law of Jim Pilgrim, Leroy Benjamin, Eugene Olden, Ronald Gill, Ardith Sandy, and Vera Sandy, caregivers Lisa Thomas, Susie Tika, and Anthea Lily Bean. Many cousins, other relatives and close friends, including Mr. Kenneth James, the Honorary, Louis Zorn, Louis, Hector, Cato, Toussaint and Nicholson families of Concord, the Brethren of Concord, Rosal, Diego Peace and Hermitage Church of God, Seventh-day, Mark Adventists of St. George's, the Seventh-day Adventist community, and friends and neighbors of Brooklyn, Concord, Marigot, and surrounding areas. The funeral of the late Sarah Sandy, also known as Dofraid and Sister Sandy, of Brooklyn, Concord, St. John, will take place on Tuesday, 17th January at 1 p.m. Funeral service will be held at the Concord Hard Court according to Church of God's Seventh-day Rites, and interment will be at the Family Cemetery, Brooklyn. Funeral arrangements entrusted to Lacqua Brothers Funeral Home. Gloria Marilyn Joseph, also known as Ma, Maru, and Miss Jo, of Latant St. David, passed away on Monday, 26th December 2022, at the age of 71. She was the mother of Nicole, Jasmine, Jeremy, Duella, Deborah in Trinidad, and Abina in the USA. Grandmother of Aria, Kanik, Aral Philip, Rahim, Jaden, Janae, and Amari. Sister of Vincent Edwards in Florida, Philip Joseph, Patrice Julian in New York, Sandra Thomas, and Joan Lewis. Mother-in-law of Delis Joseph, niece of Glenn Edwards. Aunt of Matthew, Deanne, Khadija, Kimberly, Amanda, Dana, Neil, Timothy, Emma, Mick, and Sue Ann. Sister-in-law of Byrus Edwards, Alexandra Joseph, and Hubert Julian. Many other relatives and close friends including Francis Edwards, Maureen Purcell, Monica Moses, Matthew and Miriam Bob and family, Monica Mitchell, Dominic Thomas, Gutty Sylvester and family, Miriam Samuel, Joan John, Evelyn Marichaud, Mary George, Mavis Pascal, the Edwards family of Latant, Ladigue, Content, Apritut, Rukane, Crochu in Trinidad and New Jersey, the Joseph family of Latant, Marlmont and Brooklyn, the Patris family in the USA and Dominica, the priest and parishioners of St. Joseph's R.C. Church, members of the St. Vincent de Paul Society, missionary sisters of Marlmont, and friends and neighbors of Latant and surrounding areas. The funeral of the late Gloria Marilyn Joseph, also known as Ma, Maru, and Miss Jo, of Latant St. David, will take place on Tuesday, 17th January at 2 p.m. Funeral service will be held at the St. Martin de Porres Catholic Church Croshu, and interment will be at the Churchyard Cemetery. Funeral arrangements entrusted to Lacqua Brothers Funeral Home. Richard Miners of Lansapine St. George died on Saturday 31st December 2022 at the age of 77. Left to mourn are his brothers and their families, David Miners residing in Miami, Florida, and Michael Miners in Grenada. His son, Shane Pivot, residing in Grenada. Numerous nieces and nephews residing in Grenada, Antigua and the USA, and the management and staff of Bulkby.
The funeral of the late Richard Miners of Lancepine St. George will take place on Wednesday, 18th January at 2.30pm. Funeral service will be held at the Blessed Sacrament R.C. Church, Grand Arm St. George. In lieu of flowers, donations can be made to the Grenada Cancer Society. Funeral arrangements entrusted to Bailey's Funeral Home. Gloria Bernadette Julian, also known as GT, of Redgate Bailey's Bacal at St. David, a well-known market vendor, died on July 7, 2020 in Canada at the age of 70. She was the mother of Samuel Julian, also known as Waxes, and Christina Lewis, also known as Chunce, grandmother of Samarta, Kendall, Oren, and Dylan in Canada, Carson in the USA, Livon, Errol, and Lennon in Grenada, great-grandmother of Kenisa and Riley, sister of Rita and sherri in the USA, Joseph, Leon, and Vincent in Grenada, and Cynthia in St. Martin. Sister-in-law of Yvette, Winifred, Jillian, Alice, Winston, and Selwyn. Niece of Mitchell Lewis. Cousin of Noreen. Many nieces and nephews in Grenada, Canada, and the USA. Many relatives and friends including the Cox family of Redgate, the Bain family of Westerhall, the Felix family of Content, the Hector family of Lafemme, the George family of Westerhall, the Bowen family of Laureland, the Roberts family of Woodlands, the Nurse family in Canada, the Francis and Honoré families of Redgate, and members of the Good Shepherd R.C. Church. A memorial service for the late Gloria Bernadette Julian, also known as GT of Redgate St. David, will take place on Wednesday, 18th January at 1pm. Service will be held at the Good Shepherd R.C. Church, Petit Bacay St. David. Funeral arrangements entrusted to Bailey's Funeral Home. John Francis Thomas, also known as Kipper, of Crochu St. Andrew, former auto dealer and employee of the National Taxi Association, passed away on Monday, 19th December 2022, at the age of 63. He was the father of Kieran Francis in the USA, Nikisha Mitchell, Shamar McIntosh, Junik, Judan and Junira Sayers in Grenada, grandfather of Lee Sean in Grenada, Caleb, Micah and Eden in the USA, father-in-law of Mindy Francis, brother of James Regis also known as Cloney in the USA, Samuel Thomas also known as Tide Claus, Barbara Stannis Claus, Esther Thomas, Florence Holmes and Anne Griffith in Grenada and Lydia Thomas Oliver in Canada, nephew of Franklin Francis brother-in-law of Gracelyn Thomas, Cynthia Regis, David Holmes, Errol Stanisclaus, and Clint Oliver, godmother Cousin Cicely, many nieces and nephews including Aaron, Enoch, Joel, Jude, Jermel, Shondell, Abigail, Katharina, Anderson, Joanna, cheryl Claudine, Carvel, Eunice, Gloria, Sean, and Shondell, close friend of Judith Says. Many other relatives and friends including Cousin Bernadette in Canada, Lucille Joseph, June Julian, Mary Alexander, John Dumont, Parley, Redpath, Ambrose, David Lambert, Junior Klein, Dennis Cruikshank, Kenrick Noel, Brian Whiteman, Evelyn Snack and Michael Sanderson, Carlisle Spann and Ernest Mitchell in Canada, Stephen Blestill and Michael Sylvester in the UK, Martin Lewis in the USA, members of the Crochu NDC support group, the Eastern Main Road bus operators, the Thomas family of Latonde and Crochu, the Mitchell and Regis families, and friends and neighbors of Crochu and surrounding areas. The funeral of the late John Francis Thomas, also known as Skipper of Crochu St. Andrew, will take place on Wednesday, 18th January at 1 p.m. Funeral service will be held at the St. Martin de Porres Catholic Church, Crochu St. Andrew, and interment will be at the Churchyard Cemetery. Funeral arrangements entrusted to Lacqua Brothers Funeral Home. Reynold Charles, also known as Ray and Rampoon, of Monroe Street, Victoria St. Mark, passed away on Saturday, December 10, 2022, at the age of 49. He was the father of Rinaldo and Rishon St. Louis, son of James Mark Charles in the USA, brother of Vaughn, Delon and Damien in Grenada, 
Delano, Dexter, Roll and Dylan in Canada, Maria also known as Dale, and Jennifer in Canada, and Mariah in the USA. Nephew of Francis, Eddington, Paggy and Clerval, Ashford, Franklin, Rudolph, Reynold and Fredlock, Seam, Imogene and Christine. Uncle of Nine, Nephew-in-law of Catherine Letha Saunders, Godfather of Zariah and Anaya. Many other relatives and close friends including Sislin, Ronson, Sandra, Rampa, Shai, Agnes and family, Edris and family, Rachel, Cheryl, Kay, Jess, Kelvin, Omi, Dr. Clarice Modest, retired and present staff of West Coast Bakery, the 1992 graduating class of St. Rose Modern Secondary School, the Charles, Jerome, Forto, Paul, Augustine and Edwards families, the Joseph family of Bylands, and friends and neighbors of Victoria and surrounding areas. The funeral of the late Reynold Charles, also known as Ray and Rampoon, of Monroe Street, Victoria St. Mark, will take place on Thursday, January 19th at 2 p.m. Funeral service will be held at the St. Mark the Evangelist Catholic Church, Victoria, and interment will be at the Coast Guard Cemetery. Funeral arrangements entrusted to Lacqua Brothers Funeral Home. Kizzy Ann Fletcher, also known as Kizzy, of Apretut St. David, who resided at Vincent's, passed away on Friday, December 30th, 2022, at the age of 16, left to mourn her mother, Carmel Fletcher, adopted mother, Noreen Antwine, father, Marin Williams, brothers Dillon, Calvin, Rashid, Jade, Dominic, Kellon, Nigel, Rahim, and Nikel. Sisters Nikwana, Rihanna, Liana, and Kizan. Adopted sister, Shailen Antwine. Grandmother, Glennis Fletcher. Grandfather, Joseph Alexander. Many aunts, including Esther and Bridget. Many uncles, including Aline, Akiron, Justin, Marshall, Matthew, and Campbell. One niece and three nephews. Many cousins, including Alex, Avon, Kailana, Diana, Jennifer, Shandell, and Carisha. Close relatives and friends including Bernadette and Carmen in the USA, Lorna, Kathian, Teresa, Pastelet and family, the Fletcher, Harford, and Dragon families, the Alexander family, the Kane and Williams families, students and staff of the St. David's Catholic Secondary School, the staff at courts, and neighbors and friends of Apritute, Vincent's, and surrounding areas. The funeral of the late Kizzy Ann Fletcher, also known as Kizzy, of Apretute, who resided at Vincent St. David, will take place on Thursday, 19th January at 1 p.m. Funeral service will be held at the St. David's Catholic Church, and interment will be at the St. David's Catholic Cemetery. Funeral arrangements entrusted to Bailey's Funeral Home. Godwin Modeste, also known as Solida and Amber, of Spring St. George, who resided at Mongo Road, Grove St. John a well-known past employee of Grenada Ports Authority, passed away on Friday, January 6, 2023, at the age of 69. Left to mourn are his children Eleanor and Garen Horsford, grandchildren Zane and Zariah Horsford, brother Thaddeus Williams, sisters Bernadette and Anne-Marie in the USA. Other relatives and friends, including the Modest family of Mongerode Grove and friends and family of Springs, the Horsford family of Caliste, Ambrose Philip, Pastor Milton Worm and family, and Pearl Joseph of Caliste, Harold St. Bernard, and Pastor Royston Gilbert of Springs. The funeral of the late Godwin Modeste, also known as Solidaire and Amber, of Springs St. George, who resided at Mongo Road, Grove St. John, will take place on Friday, January 20th at 10 a.m. Funeral service and interment will be at the Wilberforce Cemetery St. George's. Funeral arrangements entrusted to Bailey's Funeral Home. Millicent Sybil Harris, also known as Grands of Moritz, who resided at Grand Mall St. George, passed away on Friday, 16th December 2022, at the age of 97. She was the mother of Bernadette, Trevor, Rosetta, Christine, Gloria, and Arnold. Grandmother of Marlene, Andre, Axel, Suzanne, Merrill, Mary, Wayne, Wanda, Petra, Desianne, Luanda, 
Dominic, Randy, Shanice, Laura, Dwayne, Melissa, Cien, Sierra, and Amir. Great grandmother of 35. Great great grandmother of 20. Mother in law of Danley Edgel, Desmond Apu George, and Luann Harris. Many nieces and nephews, other relatives and friends in the USA and Grenada, including the Harford, Dowden, Kerr, Francis, Snell, Harris, Louison, Paris, Prout, Williams, Edgehill, Clark, Mitchell and Tellisford families, Sita, Charmaine Toussaint, Phyllis Philip, Emmelyn and Carl Filbert, Ronald, Zena Sylvester, and friends and neighbors of Grand Mall and Monk Moritz. The funeral of the late Millicent Sybil Harris, also known as Grands, of Monk Moritz, who resided at Grand Mall St. George, will take place on Friday, January 20th at 2 p.m. Funeral service will be held at the Monk Moritz Anglican Church and entombment will be at the Monk Moritz Cemetery. Funeral arrangements entrusted to Lacqua Brothers Funeral Home. Ermintrude Gabriel, also known as Trudy or Mintrude, of Loreland St. David, who resided in New York and Georgia, USA, passed away on Sunday, November 20, 2022, in Georgia, USA. She was the mother of Shahiba Tamari Gabriel in the U.S., grandmother of Makai Gabriel in the U.S.A., sister of Velma Dicoto and Linda Simon George in Grenada, Bernadette King in Trinidad, and Vernus Simon in New York, cousin of Anne Simon. Aunt of Sherlyn Sayers and Sherma Walters in Grenada, Peterson Dakota in New York, Shireen Glean in Texas, Suzanne King in Georgia and Jennifer, Christopher and Kenny King in Trinidad. Other relatives and friends including the Simon and Gabriel families of Laureland and the Joseph family of Monkey and family and friends in New York and Georgia. The funeral of the late Ermintrude Gabriel, also known as Trudy or Mintrude, of Laureland St. David, who resided in New York and Georgia, USA, will take place in New York. Funeral arrangements entrusted to Lacqua Brothers Funeral Home. Patricia Marshall, affectionately known as Patty, of Grand Arne St. George, who resided at Tempe, passed away on Thursday, 22nd December 2022. She was the wife of Ennison Marshall, daughter of Yoland Hagley and Jacob Wilson, sister of Sayobhan Hagley and Erin Wilson, honorary mother of Akim Marshall, niece of Grantley, Bernard, Robert, Curtis, Jacqueline, Cleveroy and Alric Antwine, Arlene Fraser, Augustine and Rafael Wilson, and Angela Haling, sister-in-law of Rhea, Gina and Nigel Marshall, daughter-in-law of Valerie Marshall, stepdaughter of Eugene Hagley and Delisha Wilson, Stepsister of Abigail Hagley Hay, niece in law of Marilyn, Mary Lou, Florence and Donna Antwine, Cyril Fraser, and Pastor Selwyn Haling. Many other relatives and friends, including cousins in law, Pastor Adrian Banfield, and members of the Gateway Assembly, and friends and neighbors of Grand Arns and Tempe St. George, and other relatives and friends too numerous to mention. The funeral of the late Patricia Marshall, affectionately known as Patty, of Grand Aunts, who resided at Tempe St. George, will take place on Tuesday, 24th January at 12 noon. Funeral service will be held at the Gateway Assembly Point Celine St. George, and entombment will be at the St. George's Center Cemetery. Funeral arrangements entrusted to Lacqua Brothers Funeral Home. Horace Anatoldi Alley, also known as Go Papa, of Duquesne St. Mark, passed away on Thursday, December 8th, 2023 at the age of 87. He was the father of Erica Downs Stanisclaus, adopted father of Emma, Martin, Shandell, Donisha, and Travis in the USA, and Blondell in Grenada, father-in-law of Roger Stanisclaus, brother of Esther, Ermin, and Stephen, also known as Mento in Grenada, Samson, Lydia, Cicely, Teresa, and Leah in the USA, Ramnat and Monica in England, and Jean in Bermuda brother-in-law of many, uncle of many including Andrea and Charles, many other relatives and friends including Winifred Peters, Erica Roach, Keisha, Sensia, Jude Bernard, Vidi Ali, Downs, Stanisclaus, Narayan, Bola, Ramjohn, Freem, Gangadine, Hostin, Walker, Japal, 
Johnson and Slinger families, and friends and neighbors of Duquesne and surrounding areas. The funeral of the late Horace Anatole Dialli, also known as Go Papa, of Duquesne St. Mark, will take place on Thursday, 26th January at 1 p.m. Funeral service will be held at the Samaritan Presbyterian Church, and entombment will be at the Family Cemetery Duquesne. Funeral arrangements entrusted to Lacqua Brothers Funeral Home. David Bubb, also known as Swordman of Mount Airy St. Paul's, passed away on Saturday, 14th January 2023, at the age of 59. The funeral arrangements for the late David Bubb, also known as Swordman of Mount Airy St. Paul's, will be given in a subsequent broadcast. Funeral arrangements entrusted to Bailey's Funeral Home. Jean Braffitt, also known as Tante Drida, of Woburn St. George, passed away on Wednesday, 11th January, 2023, at the age of 86. The funeral arrangements for the late Jean Braffitt, also known as Tante Drida, of Woburn St. George, will be given in a subsequent broadcast. Funeral arrangements entrusted to Bailey's Funeral Home. Vera McMeo of Monarca St. David, passed away on Thursday, January 12, 2023, at the age of 99. The funeral arrangements for the late Vera McMeo of Monarca St. David will be given in a subsequent broadcast. Funeral arrangements entrusted to Lacqua Brothers Funeral Home. Clarice Redhead, also known as Kao, of Café Croce St. Andrew, passed away on Thursday, 12th January 2023 at the age of 86. The funeral arrangements for the late Clarice Redhead, also known as Kao of Café Croce St. Andrew, will be given in a subsequent broadcast. Funeral arrangements entrusted to Lacqua Brothers Funeral Home. Augusta Campbell, also known as Ruthie, of New Hampshire St. George, passed away on Monday 9th January 2023 at the age of 95. The funeral arrangements for the late Augusta Campbell, also known as Ruthie, of New Hampshire St. George, will be given in a subsequent broadcast. Funeral arrangements entrusted to Bailey's Funeral Home. Dominic Horsford Alexis, also known as Tati and Da, of Mamakan St. Andrew, passed away on Monday 9th January 2023, at the age of 91. The funeral arrangements for the late Dominic Horsford Alexis, also known as Tati and Da, of Mamikan St. Andrew, will be given in a subsequent broadcast. Funeral arrangements entrusted to Lacqua Brothers Funeral Home. Venetia Samuel of Grand Let St. Andrew passed away on Monday 9th January 2023 at the age of 67. The funeral arrangements for the late Venetia Samuel of Grand Let St. Andrew will be given in a subsequent broadcast. Funeral arrangements entrusted to Lacqua Brothers Funeral Home. Ralph Munro of Vendom St. George passed away on Thursday, January 5th at the age of 84. The funeral arrangements for the late Ralph Munro of Vendom St. George will be given in a subsequent broadcast. Funeral arrangements entrusted to Lacqua Brothers Funeral Home. Catherine Eileen Simon of Happy Hill St. George passed away on Tuesday, January 3rd, 2022. The funeral arrangements for the late Catherine Eileen Simon of Happy Hill St. George will be given in a subsequent broadcast. Funeral arrangements entrusted to Lacqua Brothers Funeral Home. Exelia Amedi, also known as Tanti and Exel, of New Hampshire St. George, passed away on Tuesday, January 3rd, 2023, at the age of 90. The funeral arrangements for the late Exelia Ermede, also known as Tanti and Exel, of New Hampshire St. George, will be given in a subsequent broadcast. Funeral arrangements entrusted to Lacqua Brothers Funeral Home. The management and staff of MTV extend deepest condolences to those of you whose loved ones have passed on. Thank you for watching. Hi, my name is Bishop Daniel Moore, the Bishop of Jerusalem.
Spiritual Baptist Church. Jesus is quoting that if you believe in him, you shall live again. Those of you who have lost your loved ones, my special sympathy to you. God was declared as Jesus spoke to Martha and Mary in the 11th chapter of St. John. Quote from the 23rd verse. Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. You go further down into the 25th verse stating that Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Those of you who lost your loved ones, you can put your trust in Jesus Christ. Can you tell us in St. John 14 chapter, let not your heart be troubled. He believe in God, believe also in me. So that is not the end of your loved ones. And remember, there is a time coming when God will raise the dead back to life. As he did to Lazarus, that same time when he raised him from the grave and I want to tell you today put your trust in Jesus Christ one day you're going to see a loved one that is not the end of anyone as you view this program here today you can put your trust in Jesus Christ can the Bible tell us seek ye first his kingdom and everything else shall be added and I want you to put your trust in Jesus Christ because with him all things are possible and the Lord Jesus Christ said in his word that he's coming back again to receive all those unto him. So if you put trust in the Lord, all things are possible. So my sympathy to you all, I know you'll cry because you have lost someone. But we know that someone die, you'll have pain, you'll have sorrow. But your grief, I know that the Lord, one day the Lord will give you peace in your life. Just put your trust in him and he will give you peace in your life. Let's say a short word of prayer with you right now. 